Hi everyone, it's the interview queen Alicia Atu here, and I'm so so excited to welcome you all to my interview with Lisa Marie Varen. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm Gosh, good. Finally, how are you? I'm doing awesome. Finally, talking face to face. I try to do my hair down, but I sleep with a bun in my hair, and so I took it down. And it had all these warped things. So apologize for my my appearance right now. You know, it's an interview. I always try to look, look my best, but. This is me. <laughs> you look lovely. I have nothing to worry about. Oh, you're sweet. You're so sweet. Well, how are you holding up with everything going on right now? And how are you kind of keeping your boredom at bay? You know, um, my place is spotless. Um, I've been cleaning. Like, I seem to clean my place, like, maybe twice a week. Um, I have two little dogs. But, you know, one has a bad aiming problem. <laughs> Sheldon. Oh. Um, and, yeah, but I just, you know, I don't want those houses. I hate the homes that... You know when they have animals and you walk in and you could you can tell they have animals. Yeah. You know, I grew up. Yeah, I grew up with a lot of friends um, that had that, and it, it it just turned me off to even eating like dinner. I'm like, oh, ooh, so I can smell the animals, and you know what I mean. It's just like it disgusts me. So that's my fear. So I'm gonna come in and and you know, boy, I don't know that it's OCD about cleaning and um. I've been keeping my place clean, but you know, I live in a small loft, Alicia, so it's not very much I can do. But I've been my dogs have been getting a lot of exercise because I can't stay indoors so much. But um and you know, a couple trips coming up lined up, but now I'm scared because like the global hot spot is Arizona and I was gonna be involved in a, a celebrity tournament out there and um my boyfriend David works at Sharp medical and um he reached out to a doctor said you know my girlfriend might be going to arizona because i wouldn't recommend that and i'm like oh no so like you know all these travel plans you know even though it's, it's for work you know that kind of thing and uh it's scaring me because i'm one of those people I, I am taking a lot of precautions you know um, because you know my david david works in the hospital and you know his sister's um, uh, the first caller. Like she travels a lot um, to areas that have a lot of spikes in the COVID. So I'm hearing it from both ends. And then I have a lot of other people saying, you know, oh, you know, it's probably not that serious. But I'm one of those people. Just to be safe, they wouldn't quarantine us all, you know, unless Amazon has a cut in this. Um, you know, takeout and delivery for the restaurants have a cut in this. You know what I mean? But we're all trapped in the house, you know. And a lot of people are getting because of the scam, and I think people should be taking this a little bit more serious. You know? Do you agree? Oh, I definitely agree. I see people walking around the store without masks. I'll be in the grocery store, and they pass right by me, and I'm like, "Where?" They like Mr. Deeds you. You know, they sneak up right behind you, and you're like, "Why? Like, come on, come on." You're Betty Betty. You know you're Betty Betty, Betty, Betty Sneaky. You're Betty Betty Sneaky. I'm Betty Betty Sneaky, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad I you love that movie. <laughs> But I love that movie. And I'm watching a lot of TV. Like, oh my gosh. Serious. What's going on? Right? <laughs> right? Oh my gosh. But, but, how, but how are you coping? How are you coping with it? It's been okay. I think the only silver lining really that's come out of it is the fact that before the pandemic, I was gone every single weekend uh, in the States working, traveling. So it's been nice being able to see my family more, spending time at home. Now I'm doing tons of Skype interviews, like tons of them every day. So it's been interesting for business because we don't have bookings, but at least I'm able to do my interviews from home. So it's been interesting. It also probably increased your interviews because, um, you know, what are we going to be doing? Like for me, you know, right. You know, or like, you know, I'm like podcasts and stuff. I'm loving the, the interaction on the videos. I, I'm podcasts are very boring to me. I can't listen to a podcast. I have, it's bizarre like they're too long and then I have ADHD so my my mind I just like start thinking I need to do this I got to go to the bank I have to go to the post office but it's 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 increasing businesses like that like we just started God TV because we were yes. trapped in the house and and we got something good out of it you know um yeah but I'm also like I'm watching walking around um I live downtown San Diego there's a lot of homeless it's a big huge homeless problem it's it's if they're just, they get right in your face and you're, and, oh, hey, um, hey, do you have spare change right in your face? And I'm like, no, no, six feet rule, six feet, you know, I'm like, hey, buddy, you know, and it's, I don't know, 
I don't get it. And then now we're like in San Diego and I'm about you guys, they closed down the dining again. Um, you can dine, I think outdoors or something like that. And, but the bars, like you can't just serve alcohol, you know, but we're getting closed down again because of all this people not taking it serious. Yeah. It's kind of, it's hard, to, it's hard to see people not taking precautions, especially when they're not like they're very difficult guidelines to follow. Like they're very simple, but I am glad like on my side, I have been able to get more interviews. And for you, you mentioned God, which I really want to talk about a grown ass woman, um, yourself, Mickey James and SoCal Val. So how's that been for you having like a weekly slumber party with two of your best friends and sharing that with all of your fans? Exactly. That's what it is. It's a slumber party. They, that's you got the reference. That's a good. I haven't even actually said that, but it's like, um, you know, we're very fan interactive too, so people can send like videos of questions, and we're in the live chat on the side. You know, we do pre-record like two weeks in advance, just in case something happens. Like, you know, Mickey's still with WWE. What if she has to travel? And then SoCal Val, she's on, you know, in, in England, and no teams, and we're on different time zones. That's the thing part because when we're filming you would never notice but it's like it's super late for Val and she looks yeah. absolutely stunning stunning for that late I would be looking right I would be looking haggard I would be like going you know what I mean but um the blessing is we got this show and um you know we try to do bullet points you know just have a guideline but we always you know we go off on tangents but we just have fun with it it's a good thing about editing because you know, certain, you know, we have no filter. Well, I'm really glad to hear about that, that the show's going well and everything. And it's funny because you mentioned how you weren't able to do as many interviews. And of course, going into my interviews, I always do uh, prep and research ahead of time. And it's fun watching people interview you because they don't really know whether to call you Victoria or Tara or Lisa. Uh, so for you, having all of these different names over the years, is there one that you prefer being called or one you're more used to being called at this point? At this point, I'm used to being called Lisa because I've been out of wrestling for so long, but they still, like, in the wrestling industry, um, like, you know, we do appearances of, my remember, you know, like, well, Candace called me Sid, but there's certain people who still call me Victoria, you know, or, or Tara, depending on what company I'm with, with, and it doesn't bother me at all. I'm not insulted if someone calls me one of the characters because, like, you know, that it's just part of the business. The only business, like, outside of, um, like, TV and movies and stuff like that that, you know, I would never call, like, I'm trying to think of a character, like, uh, you, I'm trying to think of a movie, but you would never call him the character, you know what I mean? So right. it's like, it's, yeah, like I, wouldn't I wouldn't call John Travolta Danny from uh, Greek, you know, <laughs> but this business, yeah, and it, but it's also too, like, when you're in wrestling, to be called your real name is odd. Like, yeah. if, like if, I was, if I was doing a signing and someone called me Lisa, I'm like, do I know you? You know, isn't that weird? Well, the and weirdest like, thing, you know, too, like, the funniest thing to me is how you'll have a moniker wrestling name, you'll be at a show signing, someone yells your gimmick name, and you turn around like, yeah? It's like you are mentally programmed to respond to all these different uh, monikers you have. It is, it's odd. It's 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 such a, cir a circus. It's hard to describe this business. You know, it's, it's just a lot of rules under like that, that's not known and like shaking hands like with everybody when you go into into work you're supposed to say hi to everybody and if you forget somebody they might be insulted i mean there's just like it's it's a, a bizarre um yeah. it's a, a bizarre world you know it, it, yeah. you're not ever prepared for it you know it's it's you have to be super humble especially when you make it to the big leagues um you're always still felt like a rookie you know even though you've been there for years you still feel like how you doing, sir? You know, you still like are new in the game. I don't know. Maybe the guys might have it a little bit different, but the girls, I'm in my generation, we're all really still respectful. And when I used to do independent wrestling after the fact, I still go back and say, hi, everybody. I'm Lisa. Um, nice to meet you. Um, let's have a good night. And they're like, you're weird, but it was your program to do Aww. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there are so many there are so many unwritten rules that I never really knew about until you actually are in the business and you start meeting people and you're like, oh wow, okay, so these are things we do. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you have to, and for you, like, uh, not being behind the scenes of like wrestling, you, you're like, what should I not touch base on, and what what should I not talk about? And like, usually people ask me, what what could I not talk about on an interview? And I'm like, you'll know. Like, if you ask me, I, I'll just be blunt and say I'm not comfortable talking about that, or you know, it's just. Let's, let's be organic, you know, because I don't like to know 
ahead of time um, questions. They're like, they're like, I can email you questions what I might be asking. I go, no, 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 just, just ask me, ask me on air. I don't want to prepare. It'll be nice and fresh and not rehearsed. You know what I mean? You're a self coin nerd and you love comics, uh, comic cons and conventions. So who's a celebrity you've seen at a convention where you freaked out simply because they were right there? Okay, of course. I, I mentioned this on a previous show. John Travolta, when I got to meet him, and I was scared to meet him. I thought he was going to let me down. Um, Jason Momoa. Um, he was so busy, uh, but his line is incredible. And I, I get it, like, when you're just... Go, 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 because he gets a guarantee from these these appearances, and he has to make that guarantee, or the Comic Con has to pay him more money. So they need to get as many people going, and I get that, um, but it sucks to be on the other other end, you know. Um, but like um, Princess Bride, um, Wesley, uh, Carrie Ewing, I can never say his last name. He was amazing, and uh, Princess Bride, that movie, yeah, you know, um, as you wish. That guy? Oh, oh I thought okay. you said I don't know. Okay, that guy. That guy. And um, Inconceivable I met. And, um, oh, my gosh. I met so many people. Like, it's it's really cool. It's it's, it's so surreal. Um, like, when you see, when someone's waiting in line to get your autograph, you're like, are you waiting for me or are you waiting for John Travolta? You know, it's, it's a hard concept for me to still accept someone in line for me. Isn't it yeah, and people are like, well, you've done a lot for the business. I go, I, I, I get it, but I'm still still shocked about, you know, people wanting me to sign something, you know, or take a picture with me, that kind of thing. But um, I do love my anime and, like, my Attack on Titan. Um, I, I love the Ninja Turtles and, you know, Transformers, Star Wars. I'm a Star Wars geek. And all these Comic-Cons, like, these, I was, like I said, Comic-Cons are not work for me. When I get invited to them, I'm like, oh, yes, I get to go to another Comic-Con and get my geek, my geek fulfilled, you know? You know, because I'm a big nerd, too. I'll, I'll, you'll see me. This is why you don't see me sitting down very often unless my feet hurt. Because um, I'm like, oh, all these cosplayers. And I'll, I'll end up going running out. I'm like, oh, my God, look, can you take a picture with me? Oh, my gosh. You're out. You know, it's I mean, funny. You're I've, I've been with you at conventions and at shows and comic cons. Like we've signed very close to each other. And I've seen that, like you've literally gone up to people for photographs or to compliment them on their outfits. And I just find it so cute how like you have people there to see you, which you totally care about. But at the same time, you are also a fan. And I think that's what keeps you grounded because you're always so sweet and bubbly and crazy in the best of ways when I'm at shows with you. So um, in that you. regard, you're welcome. In that regard, too, have you always kind of been an outgoing and fun-loving and just, like, out there person? Because I've never seen you at a show and you've been, you know, down or anything. No, um, I've always been, like, in a, especially in public appearance, I'm, I'm always outgoing. I'm, I'm one of those people, like, I'll have start a conversation with a homeless guy and my boyfriend's like, be careful, some of them are kind of crazy, you know, like, they might take it wrong and stuff. But I'm, I'm one of those people, I've always been a social butterfly. I'll meet, I don't you know, like when I have a waitress or a waiter um, and they're, they come to my table and they're like, you know, I'll be taking care of, like, what is your name? I need to know their name because, um, you know, it's just, it's nice to say, Susie, can I get another piece of bread or something? You know, um, it's just cur being courteous, you know, being treated like, you know, how you, you want to be treated, right? But, um, but lately I'm like, I'm such a homebody, like after doing, you know, our comic cons on the weekend, how exhaust they are exhausting because you are on the whole entire time you know you don't want someone to see you off their game or you know and i i rarely took breaks i would eat at the table because just in case one person came to see me and they're like oh she's gone i'm like oh man i just let right and um there's a, another girl claudia wells she was on back to the future um she played jennifer parker the girlfriend of uh why is this i'm trying to think of his name it's um ms uh fox Michael J. Fox. Oh, I don't know why, okay. like, like, yeah, yeah, and okay. um, yeah. So she's exactly like me. We will be the last Mohicans at the Comic Con. Her and I will be the, oh, the only ones. All the other booths that people are signing, they're gone because it slowed down. And her and I are like, no, let's. We, we stay. We make fun of each other. We're like, well, hopefully someone is here to see us too. Do you know what I mean? Because um, we just we don't we don't take a break and um. I don't, I've always, but when I'm, I am, I am a homebody because it's so exhausting to do those weekends. This is what I was about to say. When I come home, I'm exhausted. I'm just fried 
and being on and giving your so much of yourself to people. Um, when you come home, you're drained. You know, you need that revamp couple of days of just sleep, rest, no makeup, take a bath, just stay in pajamas all day. You know what I mean? And just watch Netflix, you know? So, the, you know, I, but this quarantine, I became such a homebody. I'm like, and, and lazy to go, uh, to go downstairs. I was like, our elevator was out. And I'm only on the fifth floor, only on the fifth floor. I had to take the stairs. And I, I was like, oh, my God, what happened? I became so, like, not in shape from this. that I'm like, let's just go upstairs and lay down in bed. I, just, just from this not being active, right? Gosh. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I, I balance myself. I'm always outgoing. But at the same time, I need my Lisa time. Yeah. Definitely. No, I'm the, I'm the same way. I can be go, 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 whether it's traveling, work, but at home, I just love relaxing, throwing on some documentary and just snacking on something, you know? <laughs> me too. And then I've also been cooking a lot. Like, um, okay. oh, what's this? Let me try to make this. And um, yeah, I, 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 yeah. My, my boyfriend says I'm an amazing cook and I'm like, you're just saying that to be nice, but um, I've been experimenting and stuff like that. So it's a time to to do all this stuff, you know, um, and appreciate to be able to do this, you know, of course, but like, don't get me wrong. I still like to just get my Cheetos or my, my chips or my pickles or, and just sit in front of the TV, you know, and watch TV and veg out, you know? Yeah. Definitely. Well, coming into this interview, I felt like a lot of the other ones I watched and saw, like they were so based on their wrestling that they didn't ask anything else outside of it. Um, but of course you are known for your wrestling, you are known for the WWE Women's Championships that you've had and the TNA Knockouts Championship multiple times. And I know that you were actually super into fitness before coming into wrestling. And the door into wrestling was you were at a health club, and China was like, "Hey, you look good. You should try this." So was it yeah. a really was it a really easy transition for you just to go from being into fitness to actually the wrestling aspect? Um. Okay, what's similar, like the fitness competitions, you know, because you are reliable for yourself and um, you're trying to be the best by yourself, just like in wrestling, you know, you're your independent contractor and you are responsible for being in shape, um, your hair, your nails, your eyelashes, like everything, and getting Botox when you need it or a facial and stuff like that. So you always still have to be in that shape. There's a lot of pressure to keep your spot. Um, the transition, though, you know, I came from fitness, you know, it was competitive, but I still was always that friendly, bubbly person that, you know, that's how Tori and I became really, really good friends was with the fitness industry. Um, and then she got into wrestling and she was trying to get me in at the time, but they were, WCW was not doing well at the time. And then that's when I saw China. I go, oh, I have a couple of friends that are in the business, Trish Stratus and Tori Wilson from the fitness. She goes, oh, are you a wrestler? And I said, no, but I think I can do what the guys do. Like, because I was a yeah. gymnast growing up and cheerleading and stuff. And um, and she goes, you have a good look for it. And I said, oh, she goes, you should, you should send your stuff in. I did. Never thought in a million years I would hear back. Because, you know, I was living in L.A. at the time. And everybody's an actor and actress there. They're all trying to get their foot in the door. And the most common word is no. Sorry. No. Sorry. Yeah. So um, I didn't really tell anybody about my me sending my stuff in except my ex-husband because he helped me do the packaging and like the resume and all that kind of stuff and um i heard back in 30 days and wow. um i spent a lot of money on my tryout video um it was a vhs back then and i spent 600 dollars to get that spliced that like the editing um from a professional music background um trying to get all my stuff that I've done, like the news, like um, I didn't do the, I was like the girl that demonstrated exercises, you know, um, and then my fitness competitions and um, we added some more. We just went on the field and just like me stopping people to interview them. And they, they call me, they've never seen, never seen a tryout video so professionally done. And I was kind of shocked. I was like, well, what do people send in until I got in the industry? They would send in, you know, backyard wrestling or something taped on a crappy, you know, camera or something like that and it was so unprofessional and I was like yeah that was that I think I learned from fitness and being in LA you present yourself not half ass excuse my language you have to present yourself you know top, top notch or else you're not going to get the respect and that you know that was the easy transition you know but um going to something so competitive and wrestling and not being accepted in the locker room 
because everybody's scared you can take their spot. I wasn't used to people being so not welcoming, you know, that was a scary, scary thing for me. I was like, God, no one likes me here. I was like, I am not going to fit in here. Okay, just let, just pretend you're happy and you just put that mask on, even backstage. And um, until so you prove yourself, you know, and until you start having those good matches, then you start getting the respect from the boys and, and the girls, you know. But it's a hard, it's a very lonely business. People see you, like what they see on TV, it's not, you know, you're traveling by yourself or with a group of people. You're exhausted living in hotels, you know, you're trying to save money. And, but you're also like, really trying to be get in the gym okay what are we going to do in this match you know it's just it's a lot of pressure and you're on the road you're away from your family a lot and you you know you don't carry your phone with you a lot i mean they, you do but it's not like you can call your family on the road you know what i mean you call in to check in hey i got to my hotel okay or hey we're gonna go out to dinner i'll be back at this time just for safety for, you know, precaution but it's a very lonely it's a, don't, it's a lonely industry you know um that's People don't see that part of it, you know. It's it's just it's it's very tough, and like you're always thinking, "Am I good enough to be here?" You always. Um, I need to work on that. We we were talking the girls. We were on Boxer, but it's an app that you do walkie talkie, and um, it's old school. People are like, "Do you still box?" And I'm like, "Yes." And uh, <laughs> how like we need to work on our confidence, you know? Like um, someone asked me, what, "What would you change like with the new girl coming in and the young youth that?" I want to be a wrestler is on your confidence level. Don't be cocky, but never downplay your worth. And I've always been one where like someone gives me a compliment. Um, I will say, Oh, Oh, what? No, it's because I'm wearing these, these, these pants are Lululemon's and they make me look thin. I didn't lose weight. You know, I have to downplay that because I don't want to come off conceited, but at, instead of saying, thank you, we have to go, Oh no, these are hair extensions. It's not my hair or you, you know, it's, it's, you always have to have like an excuse, you know, I'm one that's not comfortable taking a compliment. It's very difficult, but I'm, I'm working on, on it too. <laughs> right? It's yeah. just being insecure. Women are insecure um, naturally and just in our business, you know, trying to look good all the time, not wrinkling and like not getting any weight. And it's just a lot of pressure to still not let anybody down. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I love how open you are when you really talk about things. Like, it's super lovely to see not just how down to earth you are, but you just really are quite an open book. So I want to say thank you for sharing these stories and coming on here and taking the time to chat with me. I'm so glad we were finally able to do this. Me too. I hope to see you at another Comic-Con coming up. Hopefully we start getting back on the road to do those. Oh, my God. I know. Right? It's going crazy. I'm going crazy. I'm jonesing too. I, that felt that really I missed my Comic-Con big time. Yeah. Yeah, I it's such it. a, it's a, it. it's a right? ah, COVID-19, you suck. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me, Alicia. Um, and tell Michael, um, yeah, Michael, I said hi. Absolutely. Honestly, so weird. So weird. God. Everyone, this has been the amazing Lisa Marie Barron. I'm the interview queen Alicia Toot. Be sure to check out AliciaToot.com for all exclusive interviews and features. And we will see you all next time. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Alicia. Bye, guys.